Elizabeth and Jinx in the annual season opener. Well, we, we had a great preseason so far. We started off Tuesday with uh, two-day practices. That we've been working hard. It's been tough in the heat like this, but uh, kids responded greatly, and i tell you what, I'm expecting a lot of great things from them. Well, offensively, we're looking in the offensive line. We've got three people. we got Joey Bailey, Jeremy Bullins, and Clark Dempsey. They were coming back last year, three starters from that group. And at quarterback, we're looking at Matt Wilgham and Brandon Brown right now and a newcomer with Brad Fields that's going to be coming on. And that wide receiver, John Crow, he's done a real good job, and he's a returning starter. We're still going to be running the split back veer and, and trying to do it the best we can and keep the production up. Well, we're a little shaky right now, but uh, every day we're working a little bit harder to get what we need to do to get done as far as Elizabeth goes and everything after that. It's, right now, we lost a lot of starters last year, and, and we're just trying hard. The thing's not really to set the goals for ourselves. It's for the team, and, you know, nobody wins an award without the team, without the linemen and everything, so... It's really for the team. We're setting the goal to go all the way this year. Also heavy on the minds of this year's team is filling some big shoes on offense that will feature a balanced attack, unlike last season, with a lot more passing. We kind of got in a rut last year with the run sometimes and, and really couldn't get a good passing game going, and I think we'll be able to do that this year. We'll be able to do some of both, you know, because we've really been working hard on the pass game, also the running game, and, and so, I mean, last year we sort of felt like we had to run almost all the time, and this year we ought to be able to pass them too, and that ought to help us a lot. Well, I think any time you run the ball, it's going to open up the passing game, and for me, I'm just going to go out and just do the same thing I did last year, just stay focused and do whatever I can to help the team win. It's pretty good. I mean, I like making a good block, but it's just going to be, it's going to be even better having a chance to get the ball in my hands and maybe somebody block for me. The Hill will bank heavily on their new versatile offense, always stubborn defense to produce an encore to last year's state playoff run that didn't see a final act. The Hill will have a schedule later in the sportscast. Today, we look at the Hilltoppers from Science Hill. Science Hill has advanced to the state playoffs three years in a row, and the prospects for number four are good in 1995. Uh, we got a great group of kids coming back, and of course, with that group of kids, we got uh, people that have been in the playoffs for three straight years, and two straight years, they've been to the quarterfinals, so they know what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, it's a legacy that we, we'd like to follow, but, uh, you know, we're, we're really not thinking about the, uh, the uh, playoffs right now. We got, you know, we're just starting two days, so we're really thinking about you know, our upcoming scrimmages, and uh, we got Elizabeth then in the back of our mind. But. The Hilltoppers return six starters on offense and five on defense, but have some huge holes to fill. Gone are All-State tailback Terry Copeland and quarterback Andy Harmon. You know, Andy was a good quarterback, and uh, I'm really glad that, uh, you know, I was a quarterback under him. And it leaves a big challenge because, you know, he he knew the system that we run. He knows, he knows the offense, and... Uh, it's um, it's it's a challenge. Last year's already said and done, and we can't do anything about it. But we got something to do about this year. Head coach Scott McClanahan has confidence in his new starters. The Hilltoppers will run the same Vera offense they've run in the past. Junior Michael Lewis steps in for Copeland at tailback, and he believes Science Hill can take it a step further than the state quarterfinals. We're always looking to make it farther. Just waiting, to get that championship ring one day. <laughs> yeah, I think we should. We need. A, uh, just go like farther this year, like go all the way. Science Hill opens the season Friday night, August 25th, at home against Elizabethton. Tonight at 11 o'clock, Mark Peace will preview the Dobbins Bennett Indians on Tuesday at Sullivan North at 5:30 and Volunteer at 11 o'clock. Wednesday's previews are Daniel Boone and Sullivan Central with Sullivan South and Elizabethton on the board for Thursday. Next week we'll preview Tennessee High and Sullivan East on Monday, August 21st. Tuesday's menu features Cherokee and Greenville. And Elizabethan, we'll while the Indians will be on the road against Sullivan South. We now take you to the Cougar Dan for the Class A 4A Jamboree, where Sullivan South and Central played in the first quarter. The Cougars finally erased the goose eggs when Lee Dingus fakes out the cameraman, myself, by sliding inside for three yards out for the touchdown. They would miss the extra point and lead 6 0. South tried to score with time running out, but Bart Burris. Nathan Vaughn had a huge night running behind that big offensive line. This time he takes it up the middle for a nice five-yard gain. Then he takes it in from three yards out for the touchdown. The Indians led 7 nothing, but the Hilltoppers came right back. That's Michael Lewis. Remember the name this season? He broke several tackles, and he's into the clear, and nobody's going to get him. 
50 yards to pay dirt. Science Hill tied it at 7-7, and that's the way it ended. Both teams kick off the season a week from tomorrow night. Tomorrow. Last night, of course, jamboree time around the area. Science Hill, Dobbins Bennett, 7-7. Seven, seven, Quarterfinals of the playoffs before having their season stop at 9-4. and four. One of those losses came against the Cyclones, who've beaten the Toppers the last three years, as we take you to Memorial Stadium, where the Cyclones got on the board first with this 38-yard touchdown that's going to come from quarterback Adam Walton to Josh Wandell. The extra point makes it 7-0 Betsy with 434 to play in the first quarter. Then trailing 14-0, the Toppers came back with this triple play from first-time starting quarterback Matt Wilhelm to Brad Fields. That's right, the basketball player to David Cassell for the score. Toppers play catch-up 14-7. And then, after recovering a fumble in their own territory with two minutes left in the half, the Toppers' new star, Wilhelm, strikes again with this dead-on pass to John Crow to make it 14-13 going into halftime. In the second half, again, Betsy came on strong as Walton, Runs in the score. The extra point is going to be good. Cyclones led this contest 21 to 16. And here the Toppers quarterback throws yet another first down pass this time to Clark Dempsey. Right almost into your living room. With minutes to go in the game, Science Hill was down 28-22. But Wilhelm came to the rescue with this pass to Cassell, who scores again. And with transfer Troy Lefevre's extra point kick, the Toppers get the go-ahead. But not to be outdone. For seconds on the clock, Betsy lines up for a field goal, but top her defensive back, Adolph Brown blocks the kick and guarantees a victory for Science Hill as we take you to the board. This one was a great one tonight. Science Hill finally breaks the losing streak against the Cyclones. That final, they win it tonight, 29-28. After the contest, the coach and the players had this to say about the game. I mean, we came out and kept battling back 44. and battling back and battling back. You can't say anything, but character was displayed tonight, and I'm just proud of these kids. Okay, what do you think the key factors were in this win? We just kept coming back, and we're down 14-0. to zero. We came back. We got 14-13. to 13. We came out to say to half. We got a couple of points on the board. They score late in the ball game. We take it right back down. We get another score. That's just called character, point blank. Okay. Yeah, it's been a great game. We were... Uh, one of our coaches is ill in the hospital right now, and we really we dedicated this game to him. Uh, we're going to give the game ball to him. Uh, we were really moti mov motivated coming out. Uh, it, it was just a great game, complete team effort. Okay, what was going through your mind when you blocked that field goal? I saw uh, Jeremy Owens do it a lot, so I figured I'd give it a try, see if I could do it, and I guess it happened. Okay. In Death Valley tonight, they were circling the wagons as the Indians of Kingsport Diamonds Bennett came to play the Sullivan South Rebels to have the toppers number. They've beaten Science Hill three years in a row. Forget the fact this is a non-conference game. These teams go for blood. Adam Walton will go deep to Josh Wandell, 52 yards for the touchdown, and check out that Andre Risen slide into the end zone. Seven nothing, Betsy. Science Hill had a case of fumbleitis early. Stephen Phipps recovers the loose football. Walton hooks up again with Wandale, this time 29 yards deep in Hilltopper territory. That set up a six-yard Frederick Oles touchdown run. It's 14-0, Betsy. Science Hill tries to come back. Matt Wilgem hits Brad Fields, the basketball player, and it's just like a fast break, a 41-yard gain. The Toppers had it all the way down to the six-yard line, but Ben Rowland fumbles. Billy Wings recovers. The turnover stops the drive, but... On the final scoreboard, the Hilltoppers come back to win a thriller. 29-28 over Elizabethan to win for the Two first last year as well. That's right. A lot more opportunities for other non-conference teams tonight. I did the Southwest Virginia beat up in Abingdon, Virginia High, and Tennessee High. But before all that, we start with these two guys, Science Hill and Sullivan Central. And what a game it was. Well, both teams enter tonight's contest unbeaten after starting the season off with two consecutive victories. In the standings, it doesn't mean much since they're not in the same conference. But that didn't take away from the excitement and hard-hitting football this matchup has created over the past two years, as we take you to the Cougar Dan, the Hilltoppers led at the half by one at 14 to 13. That's when Michael Lewis took it up the gut, busting tackles on his way to a 52-yard touchdown score. That got the topper faithful on their feet. The topper's defense then stepped up. Ben Rowland picked off the Cougar pass deep in central territory. Four plays later, Matt Wilgem finds John Crow wide open for six to make the score 28-13. Science Hill was leading after three. Central came back, though, when Charlie Garrett lost one to tight end Keith Acker to pull the Cougars to within two. But in the end, it was too much Lewis. Folks, I don't mean Bob Lewis. I'm talking about Michael. 
as he scored from long distance again right up the middle. He breaks a couple of tackles, outruns everybody. Toppers win it tonight, 35 to 26. It's a lot of adversity again, like it was week one, and I'm just proud of this group. I tell you what, they're unselfish, and unconditional. They came out and got a great win tonight. We were coming out because we wanted, we didn't uh, score last year. We uh, were 20 nothing last year, them, and we wanted to come out and you know get a little payback. As we mentioned, Science Hill beating Central tonight, 35-26. Riverdale over Jefferson County, 20-7. Central over Morristown East, 42-21. Kevin? All right, Kenny, and speaking of Morristown East... Then quarterback Charlie Garrett faked up the middle. We wanted you to see that fake real well. He then took it left into the end zone. The two-point conversion, no good. It's 28-19 toppers. After a fumble recovery, the Cougars scored again. Garrett to the big tight end, Keith Akerd. And we've got a whole new ball game that cut it 28-26. But late in the fourth, Lewis again broke one tackle, juked another, and outran the rest 48 yards for the touchdown. And that did it. Science Hill wins a thriller. 35-26, the toppers go to 3-0, Central drops to 2-1. Mark? Bob, Bob. Charlie Garrett with the bootleg to uh, make it 28-19. Science Hill still on top. Central will go to the air now. Garrett to Lee Dingus, 28 yards for the touchdown, and that cuts the lead down to 28-26. to On the next possession, though, the toppers, Michael Lewis, is going to break loose. And watch this, from 40 yards out, he's going to seal the victory for Science Hill, 35-26. Kill like Massey running back and Garrett quarterback, they got all that speed. I tell you what, and then we break the one right there, and that was great because we had to do something offensively. When we got the ball in the end zone, it was a great example of being unselfish. and unconditional. Morristown East and Kingsport Dobbins Bennett still on the schedule. This was an important game for the toppers tonight. That's right. Something had to give. Both teams 3-0 meeting in Johnson City, and I think Sevier County was out for a little blood from last year. They lost, of course, to Science Hill at home. Well, the road to the Big East Conference Championship doesn't get any easier for the Science Hill Hilltoppers. But one way to make the trip a little smoother along the way is to beat the team that's tied with you for the best record in your conference. Entering their game tonight, the Hilltoppers and Sevier County Bears were 3-0 overall, and more importantly, 1-0 in the league as we take you to Memorial Stadium where the Hilltopper faithful were green with envy of the Smoky Bears who scored late in the first half to tie the game at 14-all. But the topper aerial attack took off again in the third quarter when Matt Wilgham hits a soaring David Cassell over the middle for a 40-yard gain. But as the game wore on, the Smoky Bear defense kept on growling and forced the Hill to make two critical turnovers that would decide the game. First, Michael Lewis coughs up the ball, and then Shane Bowen scoops it up for Sevier County and takes it all the way to the two-yard line from there. Johnny Yoakum takes it in for the touchdown. The Smoky Bears led by seven. Then, with under a minute to play, another ball that wasn't handled sealed the topper's fate. When Bradfields loses the George Whaley punt, Smoky Bears recover from there. Cole Stenson takes a knee. Sevier County gets a big win on the road over Science Hill tonight, 21-14. Science Hill in Sevier County. It was tied 14 all in the third when Matt Wilton hit Michael Lewis, and he will go all the way 60 yards for the touchdown, but hold the celebration, Michael. It's coming back. Illegal procedure. The toppers had it again first and goal, but failed to get the touchdown, and Jim Lefebvre's 32-yard field goal attempt is blocked by the Smoky Bears. Fumbles and penalties just kill the toppers. Lewis and Wilton ne never really connected on the handoff, and Shane Bowen recovered for Sevier County at the Science Hill 6. On the next play, John Yoakum scored the touchdown. It's 21-14 Sevier County late in the fourth quarter. The toppers had one more chance to pull it out, but Brad Fields muffed the punt with a minute 30 to play, and Sevier County finally do. And Billy Beverly just powered his way, carrying a topper defender all the way down to the two-yard line. That set up a Jawan Clark touchdown run, and the lead is cut to 13-10. Science Hill came right back, though. Matt Wilgham can't find an open receiver, so he takes it himself and dives into the end zone. 2010 Science Hill in the fourth. I'm Kenny Hawkins, along with my co-pilot Kevin Clark. And Kevin, the big matchup tonight took place here in town. Science Hill Hilltoppers were fighting for their playoff lives. Absolutely, Kenny. The losses costly for the Hilltoppers tonight. Playoff hopes dependent on a win against Jefferson County. I think they knew that tonight by the way they played. That's right. Thanks, Kevin. In the Big East Conference, only the top four teams advanced to the playoffs, so that means three losses within the conference could spell trouble. The Science Hill Hilltoppers faced that dilemma tonight as they entered their contest against the Jefferson County Patriots with two losses 
so far this year. But before I take you to Memorial Stadium, the Topper Boosters got ready for this homecoming game in style by throwing a barbecue for the Hilltopper Sports Club. The money raised went to a good cause, according to Jim Crumley. Sports Club provides extras for all the athletic teams, both men and women's at Science Hill, not only the major sports, but all of them. Found Mark Willard for the 21-yard touchdown. That gave Jefferson County a 20-7 lead. The mixed extra point would cost them later. But later in the fourth, the toppers cashed in on a Jeff County fumble when Michael Lewis takes it in from the three-yard line to make it 20-14. The biggest play of the night involved the defense, which stopped the Patriots on fourth and two and gave the ball plus the momentum to Science Hill. Several plays later, it was Mr. Lewis again who finished with 145 yards. Two touchdowns, including this 15-yard scamper for pay dirt to help put the toppers on top, 21-20. And despite the fact topper fans could smell victory, the Patriots had one more shot on this 45-yard field goal with 36 seconds left on fourth down. But David Helton is wide to the left as the toppers hang on to win in dramatic fashion tonight, 21-20. That's a great show of character. This team's been displaying it all year long. They started off with it. And right now, week seven, they're still exemplifying it and showing it. I just praise the Lord because that was God's intervention right there. That was a great win for this group of young men and this city. So once again, the toppers win tonight. Come from behind to beat the Patriots at final 21. Jeff County still on top with a little bit to go in the ball game. Jeff County driving. They need a couple of yards for the first down. They don't get it, and the hill takes over on their own 34. They'll need 66 yards to tie it up, and they get it. Lewis, again, this time he rolls in from 15 yards out, his second score of the night. Troy Lever then hits the extra point, and it's 21-20. Jeff County has one last chance. You see it, David Helton from 45 yards out, wide left, 21-20. That's how it ends. And what a Charles grand. Gilbert hits Mark Woolard, who gets about 20 yards deep into Hilltopper territory. Now coming up, this will not be an instant replay. It's Gilbert to Woolard for the touchdown. About 20 yards again. Jefferson County led 27. The extra point was no good. But Science Hill comes right back. Michael Lewis will score. Just take my word for it. It's coming right up. Eight yards out. That cut the lead to 2014. Will that miss extra point? After Hoff the pass, we wouldn't have mentioned it if it didn't. Michael Lewis, it looks like exactly the same play. Touchdown, the Hilltoppers never miss a point after. That made it 21-20. The Hilltoppers win a thriller. 21-20 to go 2-2 two two in the Big East, 5-2 and two overall, and right back in the playoff picture. Mark? Well, the surprising Tennessee high vibe. We'll try and apply to tomorrow night's game against William Blunt. Well, we always just try to go out and do the best we can. Just... As long as you're doing the best you can, you just, that's all you can do, you know. You always don't usually come out on top if you try your best. But Matt, let's be obvious. Let's look ahead to tomorrow night's game against William Blunt. Here's another team, second from last. I think they only have one victory so far this year. What have you guys been doing in practice <coughs> to try and put the ball in the end zone? Uh, well, we're just not going to overlook anybody. We're just going to take one game at a time, no matter what the record is, and uh, take each game as it is and play our best every, every play. You know, Matt said the key word there is not overlook anybody. It's hard really not to overlook William Blunt because you got DB just down the road. We play William Blunt. That's one thing I told him the other <laughs> night after the game, wasn't it, guys? And the other thing that we got to focus on and make sure that we're doing. And, and we're excited because tomorrow night is senior night, and we got 15 great seniors that have been in this program for three years that have contributed a great amount that we're looking forward to honoring. Michael Howell important will it be to the team to send these seniors out with a victory? Well, I think it's important because, you know, they've been there for four years and they, they deserve to end with a victory. Matt, tell me a little bit about some of the things that William Blunt does special, especially uh, on defense. Uh, well, watching films of them, they run a pretty standard defense and we're just going to go out this week and do what we've always done, just run our offense the way we're coached. X's and O's, what else is special about this team? Big thing is we, they run no huddle wishbone. We got to make sure on defense that we're playing assignment football and making sure that we uh, uh, complete our assignments defensively and just wrap up people and tackle them. And offense, we got to make sure that we take the ball and be our best and do what we're supposed to with it. All right, Matt, Michael, Coach, best of luck tomorrow night. Science Hill taking on William Blunt. Game time, 7.30, being played at Memorial Stadium as we know next week's game against the game tonight along with a host of other toppers. Science Hill started on strong quarterback Matt Wilgem with a pitch out to Keith Conley who breaks two tackles and stumbles. 
for the first down. But the Toppers drives were stopped early by William Blunt's defense. This pass was intercepted by the Governors here in just a second. The Science Hill defense proved strong all night. Ben Rowland, along with other Toppers, stopped William Blunt for loss after loss. Toppers only led this contest 3-0 in the half. At the second half, Michael Lewis had a big second half. He had over 160 yards and one touchdown. Science Hill went on to win tonight over William Blunt. That final 17-7. Up next is DB. West over Knox West, 10-7. think he can he can play there and help them win the toppers jovan johnson will sign after the season the etsu basketball bucks always difficult non-conference schedule is especially challenging team science hills matt wiljam is the first team quarterback teammate michael lewis and fred powell of dobbins bennett made first team at running back, Wilgen was named the Big East Player of the Year. The Toppers' Brad Fields made first team wide receiver, as did Clark Dempsey. Science Shields' Troy Lefevre is a place kicker with Matt Mustaine at guard along with the Tribe's Joe Bates. DB Steven Kupchinski made first team at tackle. On defense, Science Shields' Joe Sanders, D. Hell, and Ben Rowland made first team, as did Ryan Larkin and Mike Parham. High school basketball players ever to wear the Science Hill Hilltopper uniform will continue his career with the Virginia Tech Hokies. Nathaniel Bailey, who has anchored the last two state championship runs for the Toppers, signed a letter of intent today with the 1995 NIT champions. Last season, Bailey hit 43% of his three-pointers and averaged 17.7 points and six assists a game. He says signing early will relieve a lot of pressure and enable him to concentrate only on his senior year. I hope it makes me play harder because I know I got a tough conference coming up and it should just push me to play harder. I guess the obvious question is why Virginia Tech? <laughs> I just feel it's a good fit for me and it's close to home. I think Nathaniel can help Virginia Tech win. Uh, I look at him as being their point guard eventually. Maybe not as a freshman. It's hard to play as a freshman. Probably not as a freshman, but down the road, uh, I think he'll be their point guard. Bailey will play behind senior Troy Mann from Patrick Henry at the point guard position. Now, prep football 5A all-conference team was announced today. There's a host from Science Hill on this team. First team, Matt Mustaine, the guard. Then you have Joey Bailey. Matt Wilgen was named the offensive player of the year, followed by Michael Lewis, Brad Fields, Clark Dempsey. This is his second time. Troy Lefever, Joy Sanders, DeFatris Hale, and Ben Rowland. Second team, Mike Nelson, Ben Rowland. All first teamers for the all-conference team. Congratulations. We'll be back right after this. Congratulations to all the Science Hill Hill fundraiser for the toppers that helped send them to Alaska for their third consecutive trip to the great Alaskan shootout. And even though the game meant nothing, as far as records go, it proceeds should pay off well for the team next month. The turnout was great. Uh, I thought we could have a pretty good crowd here. But um, I, I'm very surprised that this many people came. I bet, uh, you know, we may have made a thousand, maybe a little bit more than a thousand dollars, so that's great. Plus, it was really just like a, a game situation. Uh, the only difference being... Brad Fields nails the baseline jumper, but the toppers get their running game going finally. Nathaniel Bailey spins, finds Fields, who leaves the left-hand shot short. But where does Roy Jackson come from? The board, the foul... Another talented sophomore goes to the line. The Hilltoppers go on to beat Dobbins Bennett by 23, 51 to 28. Make the crowd get a little high. Their best shots from a few of the nation's best high school teams. Tonight, the two.